Welcome back. Still trying to get this Sockel for Admins badge. We've accomplished number, uh, this first one, get started with Sockel queries. We accomplished that one uh, in under 10 minutes, so that was good. Next is create Sockel queries in Apex classes. I have a feeling this one will have a live environment to test our skills. It will, okay. So let's see if there's anything it's trying to teach us. Um, Nothing in bold. Testing your, your code. Uh, since we just talked about Sockle in the previous um, module, um, select is this is an actual query query right here, and it's showing how we would actually declare a variable uh, as a list of contacts. And declare the variable name here. List of contacts is the is the type, and then what we're actually putting in there. So that's what it's actually showing us, showing us how to run queries in Apex, how to use loops to loop through them. This is probably one of the most, this might be the most important thing in, in Apex. Um, just looping through records. You're, you're, it's your database. You're, you need to actually potentially um, look at multiple records, try to figure out does this particular record need to be modified, and then modify it. Um, so knowing how to use a for loop um, and I really, I really like the for loop myself. You don't have to know how many records are in the result set or, or use um, dot size to uh, loop through them. So I'm a huge fan of using the for loop. And this is the, the contract of it for, and then get the actual data type, give it a name, and then the list, the, the in this case, the, the list of uh, contacts. You can also put a Sockle query right here as well. Okay, it looks like it's showing us, again, how to write a query. Okay. Let's jump in one and actually just try it, and then we'll, uh, we'll probably uncover some, some knowledge as we go. So uh, we're going to create a loop to iterate through a Sockel query. Okay. So let's launch. And I don't know if I want to use that one. I feel like I made that. I feel like that's the name f that I created for a different. Yeah, I don't think I made botanical yet or did that. But let's go back. Oh, should I forget how to change them? There we go. All right, let's do a playground. Sure, 10. And we're trying to do this in under 20 minutes. Okay. So we need to write a query to get the name and annual revenue of all accounts. And we'll probably use this. Oh, it's going to give us these step by steps here. And let's see. Let's build, let's build this out and then come back to this as well. So let's come in here. We're going to go to Developer Console, click Setup, Developer Console. I'm going to create a new Apex class, I believe. Yeah, create a class called, if you know, I'm, already, I'm a huge fan of copy-paste. So we're going to create a class called Account Utility. I want to do that again just in case you missed it. In the developer console, file, new, Apex class. I've already copied it. It's in my clipboard. So that's our new class, account utility. And in the class, we're going to create a method called view annual revenue. And it's going to be a public static, and it's going to return a value of void. That's interesting. So what's it gonna do? So I'll come back. Oops. I actually don't need to come here. I need to just keep hitting Alt Tab. Let's see if I remember. So we need to make a class called that view annual revenue, and I think it said public. Yes. 
Okay, so we're going to make a public static method called void. I don't believe it takes any parameters. So that's our method. It doesn't have to return anything. So public, which means we could, if we wanted to, call account utility and then view annual revenue. We don't have to actually instantiate this object first. We can we can type, and I'm just going to come up here and type this to show. We could type account utility dot view like so. Thank you, IntelliSense. We could actually type that, and then whatever value would return or what I'm in this case it's a void we're not returning any any records it would actually run this and you could probably maybe the best place to do that would be in debug and I can hit execute and then it actually would run that and again I said I didn't have to actually instantiate to run that the the other option is I would if I had wanted if I needed to instantiate it it would I would do public non-static so public I guess void again um, we'll just call it view revenue just to show just to highlight the distinction so save that so in order to run this one and I'll just try to run it the same way for those of you that already know what I'm doing my apologies but some people don't know this so you gotta show them view revenue this will not work I can't do this so let's get rid of that one oops I'm actually just gonna highlight that I'm gonna get an error a non-static method cannot be referenced from a static context so in order to run this I actually have to instantiate this object first so I have to say account utility give it a name I don't know AU equals new account utility then I can reference this instance of the object and then run that method so this is how I run a non-static method they didn't ask for that though they asked for a static one but I just wanted to highlight that distinction Okay, and in there they want us to create a list called accounts list, and from the name, I'm going to assume, probably rightly so, that should be a list of accounts. So let's make a list of account called this, and it's going to be a new list of account. Okay. And then we're going to query and assign the results to a list. Oh, got it. Okay. So we're going to uh, query these fields, name and annual revenue. And it says here, use the API names, not the field or label names. Let's actually get those fields. So let's bring that back up. Let's go to, uh, and I, again, just, always best to just actually get the actual values uh, so let's go to fi uh, file open objects account is right here and it wants uh, name so that is name and annual revenue I'm hitting control Oh, let me hit query editor. Type query. So I've now, with the control key, I selected name and uh, annual revenue. My query is right there for me, which is really easy. I can now just copy that. And that's what it wanted us to put in here. And I can do this a few ways. I can say account, I can declare or instantiate my account list like that. And then do this accounts list equals, and then within brackets, 
I can populate it that way. That's one way of doing this. And then I'll just show it in three different ways all in one spot. I can also do this. That's the same thing. And it also wants us to loop through this and iterate through the results. So yet another way. Oh, I need to give this a name. I can't, oops. I can't have the same variable name. So just to illustrate this, this is going to do this, this, these two lines, six and seven, will do the same thing as line nine. One of these might be easier for you to read. Whichever one is easier for you, do that. Um, since the next step here says um, create a loop that iterates through the results, we can do this another way again. We could loop through the results like this. We can say for account and give it a, a name. We'll just call it A for now. It's fine. Uh, two. And then we could say accounts list, either one of these. So what this says is loop through all the results. And then in our code block, do something. Uh, but we can also do this. And I wouldn't even need, so I could, I don't need these at all. So with one line, I could loop through accounts with this, using this query. I could, if I wanted to be more verbose and show it again, whichever one is easier for you and whoever's going to help you debug this later or, uh, or change it up. So whichever one is easier for you, use that. And I'll, I'll just go with this because I think it's, it's a little cleaner. So we're going to loop through the results. And for each item, concatenate the account name, followed by colon, followed by the account's annual revenue. Okay, I think it's this is what it's supposed to look like so we'll do that and then store the concatenated string in a variable name ACCTREV so I think that means this um, string ACCT I think it was capital R yeah ACT TREV equals And it wants the account name as a variable. Revenue colon. Account name colon counts annual revenue. Oh, so I don't actually need it to say revenue. So I think it's just account name. So account name, I have a variable named here, a. So a dot, and then I know that I queried this field, name. So I need account name, then I need a colon. I don't think it wanted another space. We're gonna act like we don't need this. Oh, we don't need the space, and then revenue. So here's me concatenating that annual revenue. Okay. So we now have a string where we're concatenating this value, colon, and then that value, and then we need to print acctrev to the debug log. So this should be uh, 
I actually kind of forgot how to do <laughs> system dot okay system dot debug and then ACCT REV so this is a very simple one and if we cleaned it up to be a little neater probably look like that okay that seems like it's what it wants let's read it write a query to get the name and annual revenue of all accounts then use a for loop to iterate through each account printing the name and annual revenue of each account to the debug log okay seems right let's see what happens we cannot find can't find a list named accounts list in account utility class. Oh, okay. So I got I got too clever. So it does want <laughs> it does want the name of that list. So let's do it. Uh, list accounts. Oops. List of account. List equals new list count. Or oh, and we'll just do it in one line. So that is our list of accounts, and then we want to loop through this. There we refactored on the fly. All right, let's check it again because that was the error. We can't find a list named accounts list in the account utility class. Here's the account utility class. We made a list called accounts list and we're utilizing that. Let's check it. 